Zero, let's squeeze in Charlie in L.A. Charlie, you're up first on Verizon Wireless Lakers line. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, Charlie. Hey, um, I really want to talk about Kobe's off-ball defense because we've seen it all before. Like, we've seen him play some bad off-ball defense, but we all know that, like, in the All-Star game, he locked up LeBron. We've seen him go to the first all-defensive team multiple years, but you just saw it. That Trevor was literally camping in the corner, a guy that he's played with for about three or four years, and he can't lock him down after that sick three-pointer that he made in the corner. I just don't understand what was up with him keep going away and trying to help and leaving him literally wide open four or five times in a row. Yeah, grand total of seven three-pointers. Charlie, thanks a lot for the phone call. Uh, wow, yeah, 9 of 15 for uh, Trevor Reza, 7 of 12, 7 of 12, I, I just can't believe I'm even speaking those words, but uh, that is exactly what Trevor Reza had today with uh, 25 points off the bench. Um, no, not uh, not a good moment for Kobe Bryant, I mean, he had the, the offensive numbers were there with the exception of the six turnovers, but uh, defensively, uh, they needed him in that second half, and he was not able to provide uh, much, if uh, anything. 877-710-3776. 877-710-3776. Coming up, more reaction from the Lakers uh, losing to the Wizards, 103-100. <laughs> It's KB24 status. Charles Ryan. Kobe24 MP3. Charles Barkley. Chucky Atkins. Chunk. Chuck. Or simply the biggest Laker fan on the planet. We're back with another episode of Lake Show's Finest Redux. And Andre Ingram played a good, oh, what, three minutes? That's what I call efficiency <laughs> let's lay the smack down to one of the worst teams in the league and then we can put in Andre Ingram wow so 
good win, good win. LeBron played hard, whatever. Kuz played well. Had the sick crossover. I don't know if you all noticed, but I don't know. The fourth quarter, I'd say. Kuz had this sexy crossover on Laurie Markkinen. He did a little, uh, jab right, uh, left. Two pump up. Reminded me of a little young Kobe right there. And laid it in. That was hot. Don't want to talk too much about the game, though. It's kind of meaningless, to be honest. Um, Not really sure how this even was a game in the first place. But it all came down to a W. Snap that five-game losing streak. Um, so I want to talk about a little bit about Brandon's health, um, LeBron's comments, kind of repetitive, and I guess the rest of this road trip a little bit. Um, this one won't be too long again. Um, it's kind of hard to elaborate on games that are meaningless, and especially when a majority that not majority. I'm sorry. A significant amount of players are out, so you're not really like an eval- evaluating like a real game, especially when he's playing when Luke is playing Caruso and uh, I guess Andre Ingram. But yeah, let's talk about Brandon. Um, my dad's a doctor, so when he like told me exactly what the blood clot thing was, kind of freaked me out. Um, thank God! Thank God! He's only 21 years old, right? I mean, I think Chris Bosh, this is different, but Chris Bosh had blood clots in his lungs. But that was when he was like 34. Um, But Brandon will have the next, you know, what, until training camp in late September, mid-September. So what, next five, five and a half, six months to recover. Um, Hopefully he can work on his... um, Hopefully, he can work on his, a little bit more on his jump shot. It's sexy as hell. He was kicking ass once again. I mean, when he has these games where he goes 11 for 11, 10 for 10, 10 for 10 in the first half, and then 5 for 8 in the first half, it's just, can he do it consistently? Can he do this every game, every time? Because I, honestly, I think there was a point where some people thought Kuz was more consistent and more diligent. But I think Brandon is. I mean, Lonzo's like a. I don't know. Lonzo's kind of two faced. But Brandon just. You could tell he puts in the work. And I said this a million times, but he has one of the most unique skill sets I've seen. Obviously, reminiscent of Kevin Durant, just two inches shoulder. Two inches shorter. Um, when he has that high. High top hair, though, that he used to have. You know, he was right there in height. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so hopefully he can recover. And uh, I'm no doctor, but I, I hope it all works out. I mean, the Lakers have one of the best training staffs, apparently, because everybody keeps getting injured. So I don't know if that's a result of the practice, the training, the, the diet. I have no idea. But um, this is beyond, you know, just an ankle, obviously. A blood clot's a huge, huge, huge deal. Gotta manage that shit. Gotta keep an eye out for that shit. Uh, Let's talk about LeBron. The past, like, three weeks, and I really, really, really think LeBron cares about his public perception. I really do. I I think LeBron cares about his public perception more than any other player in the history of the NBA, to be honest. He 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 keeps saying over and over again, and these injuries kind of fucked us before I went down. December 25th, we were the four seed. Yada, yada, yada. He's right. Rondo missed, what, 45 games? LeBron missed, what, 16 games, 17 games, longest uh, missed games consecutively in his career. Um, he's right. However, you can't just blame it on that. I mean, it's easy to cop out and blame everything on injuries because I've never seen this before, personally. I've been watching basketball for a lot of years. I've never seen Rondo, someone like Rondo, break his hand twice in the same, what, first three months of the season? I've never seen that. Nobody's ever seen LeBron go down. Lonzo has this good tendency of just getting hurt at the most <laughs> unfortunate times. But it's just constant. It's, it's, an, it's an epidemic, you know. 
Lance banged up. Uh, Tyson is, I don't know, AWOL? Where the hell is Tyson? Um, yeah, so LeBron's got to stop making these excuses because he cares about his legacy, and I think this one year will be a blip. And I said it a few podcasts ago where um, I was watching First Take, and I never like really watch watch it like seriously. I think it's more of a joke. You know, Shannon and uh, Skip and Max and Stephen A. I think it's more like a show and just, I'm just pulling any take out of their ass and all these idiots watching believing it. But he, he does have some good points most of the time. But I, I think Stephen A is one of, he does it so well. He's like a great actor. But he he is smart. He's been doing sports, print media, whatever, for so long. But he had this point that was this could damage LeBron's legacy because, what, for the past eight years, you were in the East, and like I said, it says before, you were in the East, LeBron, and you coasted every time into the finals, but now you come to the West and you're out of the playoffs. And I don't think that's exactly fair because, once again, they were the fourth seed before he got hurt and everything went downhill, but he's right the West is harder, period. You came to a conference that's harder. It's the, one of the hardest conferences. This is one of the most difficult conferences that there's ever been a conference in the past. Maybe the history of the NBA because there's so many teams that are competitive. And a lot of these teams, they smack around these Eastern Conference teams. And that's where they get their shit done. And we just didn't. Um, and they defeat their inferior opponents like the Phoenix Suns or... In the Clippers division, they play Phoenix four times. I don't know if they play them all four times. I don't know what the record is against Phoenix. But they get these teams get the job done. And obviously, it's so tight every year for the last few years. While in the East, it was just three or four teams. And it's ironic, once again, because the East seems to be the strongest it's ever been um, for a while. Even if LeBron was in it. I mean, the Raptors, Celtics, um, Bucks look legit. I think the most legit team is the Bucks. I, I, I don't think it's a stretch to say that Giannis is the best player in the league because he's the best player on the best te- team. I think that's wrong. LeBron is the best player in the world. But it's just interesting how as soon as LeBron left, everything opened up. And it seemed more like he was leaving a hole for some other teams to fill, I guess. But he really wasn't. A lot of these teams were up and coming anyways. And now they've kind of, like, solidified themselves, I guess. I mean, I think the Sixers suck, to be honest. I mean, they have no depth. They're training two-for-ones, two-for-ones, in terms of getting Tobias and Jimmy. But, um, yeah, I think they're going to suck, and then I think Jimmy and Tobias are going to leave. I think Tobias might stay, but I think Jimmy will leave. But, um, yeah, that's Elton Brand's a terrible GM. But... Um, just it's the Bucks. The Bucks have always had this potential, and they just had the wrong coach. I think Jason Kidd did well in Brooklyn, pretty well, but uh, Bud, um, yeah, Budenholzer, their coach, yeah, he uh, he's from the Greg Popovich tree, and he's taken this team in its first season to new heights. It reminds me of when Phil Jackson took over the Lakers in um, two thousand. 1999-2000 season, and they won a championship right away. I don't think the Bucks are going to win a championship. I don't think anybody can beat the Warriors, barring something crazy happening. But I do think that the Bucks have a legitimate chance to go to the championship because of their coach. In the NFL, the coach seems to be the most important person on the team, the head coach, like Belichick or uh, Sean McVay. Or... Well, Sean McVay is different because he has Wade... Wilson, I don't know, Wade Phillips, whatever. But, you know, Belichick has so much experience, and so does Bud. When Bud coached the Hawks, he took them every time to the Eastern Conference Finals, Eastern Playoffs, and and LeBron kept kicking their ass. But he's a different animal. Bud is a different players than Jeff T, Paul Millsap, Al Horford, um, Kyle Korfer, and whoever the fuck else there was. Um... These are legit players in the books, and they can go far. And back to the main point is that 
it might. I don't think it damages LeBron's legacy. That's for anybody else. That's objective. That's subjective. However, I do think that it is a blip once again, but it really proves how difficult once again that the Western Conference is and that you can't underestimate any of these teams. You really can't. Especially when you have LeBron on it and everybody is gunning for the Lakers every night. And I said this at least twice in other podcasts slash YouTube videos, but I said, when LeBron comes to your hometown, when LeBron comes to Phoenix, when LeBron comes to X team, and the crowd is significantly more... Uh, um, sorry. When LeBron comes to the, the Suns, for example, and the Suns have terrible attendance, and then all of a sudden the stands are f- filled up and a fifth of the fans are Laker fans, that would tick me off if I was on the Suns. When LeBron comes to Atlanta and the whole entire stands are full of uh Laker fans, you know, Lakers East. If I was Trey Young, I would want to kick his ass and they did. They get up to play LeBron. They got up to play Kobe. They got up to play No, they did it. When we had D'Angelo and Julius, we snuck up on teams because people underestimated us. That's not a thing anymore. I mean, watching tonight was hilarious. Watching these no names Go after LeBron James, Rajon Rondo. I mean, come on. Come on. Um, I was actually listening to the Bill Simmons podcast the other day. Um, Actually, no, I'm sorry. It was the Larry Wilmore Black on the Air podcast. And Bill Simmons was a guest. And I never listen to that podcast unless there's something sports related on it. Like Bill Simmons or I don't know. I think he had like Kareem on once or something. I don't know. But um, he was saying that um, I lost my train of thought. Fuck. He was just saying something along the lines of like, um, the Lakers are. Oh, here it here it is. Like the Lakers got rid of all these guys, and now. If, like, obviously, if there isn't, like, the Lakers were banking on getting Paul George and LeBron, period, right away. And if they don't get Anthony Davis, it's not a bust, he was saying, but it would be disappointing. And he was saying, I mean, look at D'Angelo. He was saying, look at D'Angelo Russell. He's about to get a Supermax. I don't know if he'll get a Supermax. Uh, or I don't know if he'll get a Max. He's not eligible for a Supermax veteran. The veteran designated blah, 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 super max. You have to play like eight years in the NBA, yada, yada, yada. But he'll go to max, maybe. But the point of that, obviously, was to make way for a second max. And we didn't get it. And if we don't get Anthony Davis, I don't know what we're going to do. Clay would be nice, but he's a little bit older. I think the best thing we could do is get Anthony Davis or Kyrie. And I think it's better to get... I don't know. Because <laughs> Anthony Davis's contract isn't up next summer, right? I think, if in a perfect world, I would get Kyrie for one year and do it as a test year and see what happens. And then from there, when Anthony Davis is a free agent, then I would negotiate. Uh, and then I would get him. But also, you have to think about this. If you have Kyrie, then you don't want Lonzo, which means you trade Lonzo plus somebody else for AD, right? So you have Kyrie, AD, and LeBron. I don't know the money situation. That probably means you cannot give Brandon a rookie extension. I don't know the whole details about – because the rookie extensions happen before free agency, I'm pretty sure. So I don't know – like, I don't get the whole bird rights thing and whether you could sign a max with cap space and then go over the cap with the bird rights player. I, I mean, it's confusing. Because if you have enough money for Kyrie and AD once you renounce all these contracts, but you put... Because um, by getting rid of Alonzo's huge contract, because next year he makes, like, I don't know, $11 million or something. 
like you have to just coordinate the money and I need to know the technicality shit. My point is in a perfect world I would get Kyrie, LeBron, and then AD and but trade Lonzo to get out of that and then you gotta figure out Brandon because Brandon is the perfect, in my opinion, perfect number three player. And when he's a number three player, I really think that's when LeBron goes out or AD goes out, he can take over and take that load off because he's just that good. And I think in time, give it, I don't know, three to five years in his prime, he'll be one of the best shooting guard, uh, like a small forwards in the league. I really do. I really think this guy's the second coming. Or I guess the third coming because the first coming was Kobe and all those fools and AI and the second coming was like LeBron, but recency shit maybe i'm ranting too much sorry guys <laughs> but i don't know i guess that's enough of that but the point is back to brandon and his blood clots no just kidding um <laughs> it should be interesting to see what happens um and i i, I think Stephen a is right when he says it shows how weak the Eastern Conference was, and everything's going to change in three months when free agency starts on July 1st, so I guess that's four months, less than four months. Um, Next podcast will be an evaluation of most likely Lonzo Ball, but we'll see what happens. Um, I I mean, uh, preview, it's not like I'm freaking, I don't know, like teasing you guys. I just, I'm going to dive into Brandon overall stats, his stats prior to the injury, uh, um, um, his percentages on PNRs, pull-ups, um, three-point percentage through X, uh, through the beginning of the season, the middle of the season, after the post-LeBron injury, uh, when LeBron came back and they were playing really well together, um, all that stuff. Um, his pull-ups from 15 feet, um, just everything. And uh, we're really going to deep dive into this. What I think Brandon needs to work on. I mean, who am I to say? But it's just an opinion. Uh, well, right now he needs to work on his health. But what can he do once he's healthy to get there where he needs to be? Because last summer, if you guys recall, Lonzo was hurt through the whole summer. And that stunted his development. Obviously, summer's an opportunity to get better. And he couldn't. And right now he's missing even more time. So in a perfect in a perfect world, if he had all this development, it was so much all all this more experience. It would have just been so much better. But uh, that's another reason why I wouldn't mind trading him. I used to think, and I've said it like I don't know a month and a half ago, that Lonzo is would be the greatest Laker, one of the greatest Lakers of all time. But that's barring if they want to win now or not. Because if you could keep Lonzo and LeBron and B.I., sign Ron into a cheap contract, get Kyrie on a one-cheap year, one-year test deal, that's a bunch of ball handlers that can really guard and ball and know how to move the ball. That will definitely give Golden State a little bit of a fight, right? But, yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll go on a 16-win a streak and make the playoffs. <laughs> who knows? All right, I'm Chuck, Charles Ryan, Chucky Atkins, yours truly, KB24, status, Mamba out.